Welcome back guys, it's home makeover time. Let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, we are going to be going over my craft room slash studio. I am very excited to have this space that I can start getting up and going again. And I just am gonna walk you through where we started and how we got here. Um, I will go ahead and let you know so don't waste your time if you're looking for uh, like a craft organizing video. This is not that video. Um, I'm going to wait to be in the space a little bit and give myself a little more time to organize and figure out where exactly I want things to go. However, I will walk you through like the room makeover and I guess in general the setup and like the stations that I have and will be creating. So let's start with we immediately pulled out all of the carpet and scraped all of the popcorn ceilings um, from the house. We only had carpet on the second level, but we pulled it from all of the bedrooms, including the room that I am now using for my studio. Scraped all of the ceilings, did everything we had to do to get those done and painted and ready to go. And then before the new carpet came in, we were able to go ahead and get the trim painted around the bottom, as in the baseboards. That way we ha didn't have to get a paintbrush with fresh paint close to the new carpet. And then we called it on there and started to move everything in. Um, it was very overwhelming. We not only had all of my craft stuff, like craft related stuff in here, but we had like, we stored all of our couch cushions in here as well because we were still working on the living room area whenever all of this was happening. So we had just a ton of stuff just stacked in this room and you literally couldn't walk through the door. It was so overwhelming to me. I didn't know how or where to start. I kept putting it off because I just would get way stressed out about it anytime I would think about it. But it was the next thing on the list and I knew no matter what, I really had to tackle it. Ready or not, here we come. So I had come home from work, very tired, was trying to just rest and chill and get ready for the busy week. And then I knew because I was gonna have to start with pulling everything out finding a spot for it, getting it put away. That way I could even like just begin to start painting. To my lovely surprise, my boyfriend, I'm so grateful, he knew I was really overwhelmed and stressed by this. And so he went ahead and did that step for me. He spent several hours in this room, which is kind of, um, I wouldn't say organizing is the word, but like putting everything up in a really nice way. That way it can be tucked away in an area that it's safe until I'm ready to get to it. Um, that way I could just move things around. He also kind of played with a layout for me. Um, we had kind of talked before on what exactly I'd be wanting. So he just kind of put things in the space to kind of help me. I'm a very visual person. So I could start to actually visualize the room and decide what I wanted to do with it. So thank you, Austin. I appreciate you. You drive me crazy, but I love you. Okay. Anyway, I needed to start by picking a paint color. So one thing you need to know is I do not have above headlights in this room. Um, it's the only room on like in the entire house that doesn't have it, I don't understand. <clears throat> anyway, um, so I needed to make sure I kept this space really bright and um, just kind of natural. That way it wouldn't darken the room at all and I could have a good, um, lighting situation for my videos, which I'm still working on because you can kind of see my shadow back there, but <laughs> we are, we're going to get there. Um, I went to Sherwin Williams and kind of played with a few colors. I also looked online and found a few colors that I knew I was interested in. I was wanting a white that wasn't kind of like an under yellow tone. Um, I wanted it to more to have like a reddish pinkish like undertone instead of like that yellow. And so I went and there was one called Snowbound that I just kept getting drawn back to. I took a little piece of wood that had my trim paint color on it so I could lay them all out next to it, kind of see it. Walked around the store with it just to get some different lighting to see which one. And I kept coming back to Snowbound. So that's the, what I chose, Snowbound and Satin. And then I was ready to get painted. So we did already prime the walls in this bedroom. Um, we did that in pretty much every room in the house just to dull down the colors. This was like a mustardy dark yellow color. And knowing that I was putting white over it, I wanted to start with a semi-fresh slate. So we just did a really thin coat of primer whenever we were doing all of that, um, like 
dirty, yucky work, like pulling the ceilings and carpet and everything. So I was ready to paint. Um, I did start by finishing out the trim. So like I said, we had only done the baseboards. So I finished all of the trim um, around the door frames and the window and then got to the walls. I'm just going to cut it in and paint it up. I did two coats. Now I will say, thinking about it now, I had planned on going back and doing the cut-ins one more time. You can't really tell, but I can tell in just like certain areas. So I'll probably still do that. I didn't have to tell you all that, but <laughs> I probably will still do that just because I know that there's a couple places there that need to fix up. But I really, really like this color. It's, um, the whole room is like white, but it's just a little bit of a contrast. It's like a little bit of a deeper color. The trim color is really bright. So it just gives a little bit of dimension while also still keeping the space really bright and really happy. Okay, so from there, I wanted to do a feature wall. Ain't she pretty? <laughs> so I looked at the faux brick panelings and I decided to get the ones from Home Depot. I just really liked the way that they looked. And I had an awesome gift card from Christmas that someone had get, gotten us. So we decided to go there and pick up two. They are, um, I believe, four by eight, so four foot by eight foot. And I wanted two because I wanted to keep one hole and then I wanted to cut one in half um, to finish on the one side so I could make the one six foot long that is directly behind me. And then on the wall that kind of wraps around, um, just use the other part of that. It's just two foot deep just because if you've watched my other video of my feature wall, I don't know, I really like when they wrap. I like, um, like even in my old studio, which was formerly my daughter's, uh, it was formerly my daughter's room. Like I did like a abstract painting on the wall and I wrapped it around the corner. I just really like how it like encompasses and it's not just flat on a wall. I don't know. It's just what I do. Um, so anyway, we had to get the measurements for that. So we started with our wall measurements. We went outside and cut it. So you can cut this stuff with a saw. I would definitely suggest having a hand saw on hand. Um, we have one, but it's not functioning at this time. So we had to use our table saw, which is not the end of the world, but not the easiest thing to do with a large piece that's sort of flimsy sort of pretty flimsy so uh, it was a little bit of a challenge to make it happen but I had my boyfriend helping me with two people it was doable it was no problem so we ripped the one piece in half with the table saw which was really helpful so if you have one I would use it for that but then when you're cutting the length I would definitely suggest a hand saw like a circular saw instead of a table saw so what we had to do was we have like a his grandpa's old um, like drafting table, like art table, and we were able to put it to the same height as the saw, lay the two ends on there, and then I was in the middle kind of like holding it. Um, eventually we shifted the table to the middle, and then I was helping because it's too big for him to push all at one time, so we were having to like, he was pushing and I was just barely helping move it at the same time to keep the measure like, or like the cut straight and it was a little bit stressful so if you have a hand saw that would definitely take it out of I keep saying hand saw I mean circular saw like electric you know this is yeah anyway um so after getting that all cut down we had to get it back into the room to be fitted to make sure everything looked good we had marked the studs prior to um bring it in to fit and actually hang that way we knew where we needed to hit it is suggested that you use liquid nail along with um, brad nails to hang this on your wall i did not do that because i don't know how permanent i want this to be um you can still pull it off the wall with the liquid nail but there's a chance that you could rip the like front like the facing of your drywall and i didn't want to have to patch everything if that were the case so we put in a lot of brad nails all up and down all of the studs and i really don't think we're going to have an issue it was very secure whenever it was on there so we did that um, we were careful when you're making your cuts if you want your brick to line up um make your cuts from the same side so like pick a top and a bottom mark it okay well i'm going to cut the length off of my bottom and that way all of your bricks are being cut at the same like point and then make sure when you hang them on the wall that you're also lining those same so whatever you chose as your top is your top versus your bottom 
That way it's going to be easier to line them up. It may not be perfect, but it will look way better than if you just like have a half a brick, meaning a half a brick. So um, anyway, that is just a little tip that I have for you. Um, but we got it all broad nailed up and we did have to cut around the outlet that we have down here. So we just used our um, Dremel multi-tool with the oscillating head. So it's like a long, it's like a flat head that was very perfect that we could, um, he just kind of like held it on and sawed through it. And it worked really well and gave us really straight edges. That way when we pop this on the wall, the outlet um, obviously can go through so that it can still be used um, and that those piece will sit flat on the wall. So we got all of that done. We did the corner parts and then I needed to go ahead. I wanted to put trim on the edges just to kind of give it like a more finished complete look. So I had two pieces that I had ripped from the previous feature wall. That way I didn't have to cut anything again. So I just cut them down to the length I need and I put those up on the wall as well. And then I was ready to patch all of my holes. So this is the part where it gets a little tricky. Um, I didn't think I was going to have as much issue with this as I did. So I just patched in all the little brad nail holes, which you could honestly hardly see. But what I was worried about was like the paint not sticking to that like metal and you seeing little shiny dots behind me. So I went ahead and found all of them and patched them. And then I patched in the seams. What I did was take um, the drywall filler that I have and fill in all of the cracks and then because the two directly behind me didn't perfectly line up I kind of used it to kind of fill so like if the bricks kind of sat like this I filled in this section right here to kind of make it less harsh and then I did build it up with a little bit of texture which I think if I wouldn't have done it it would blend a little bit better but you live and learn. Um, if I really didn't like the way that it looked, I could paint it solid and it would be okay. But we're going to kind of test it out and see how we like it. I filled that in. I filled the one in the corner in um, and that way, you know, it looked nice and seamless and kind of just had that mortar look to where there wasn't a gap anymore and let it dry completely overnight. The next day I was ready to paint so I still used that snowbound and I did water it down. Um, I didn't want a super thin whitewash like I did for instance on my fireplace downstairs if you saw that video. Um, I wanted it to be a little thicker one because we're working over carpet. We just paid a lot of money for this carpet and I didn't want to ruin it. Um, so I did cut trash bags and put them down that way if I made any splatters or anything we keep the floor safe but um, I also didn't want I wanted to be able to see some of the brick still and get some depth in it, but I didn't want you to see the red. Um, I wanted it to still, like I said, be white and pretty, I don't know, see-through, but not. I don't know how to, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Anyway, so usually when I do a white wash or a wash, I use equal parts paint and water. This time I use, say, for instance, a cup of paint to like a half cup of paint or water so it was like one cup to a half cup instead of one cup to one cup if that makes any sense at all so i mixed that up and it was ready to get started um originally i was going to paint it on and wipe it back off with paper towels or dab it like i have in the past but i did not like that look so i decided to excuse me paint it on and i was going to use a brush to cut in and get in all of those grooves and then a small roller that has good texture that was going to leave really good texture on the wall. So I just did that in sections and I like to work um, horizontally, not vertically. That way um, you can try to stop at a mortar line. Um, so you'll do however many, however many wide and you want to work fast. So make sure you don't have to take any breaks in between or make sure you have an area specifically planned out so you can stop to where you're not stopping at a half brick either way because you will see the paint overlap if you do that. So I just started working my way horizontally all the way across and then I would come back and work, you know, pick my next spot down, work all the way across, come back, go down, work all the way across. This way I can try to hide where those paint overlaps are the best I can. I let that dry and then I was ready to kind of go in and try to one, hide seams a little bit better, but also give, like I said, a little bit more dimension to the wall. And I would just pick random bricks and use that roller and add, you know, just a little touch of paint here or a solid 
brick or whatever kind of just to add some texture and um yeah dimension and then also like i said hide some of the seams so i did that take a step back and then one more time on some of those more solid bricks i did one more coat just to make them really bright like you can see here um how they kind of like pop out you know like this one clearly only got touched once where this one got touched three times and you can see how bright and I just really love that look and how it turned out um like I said with how bright they are but still like I don't know we just needed something we needed some depth in this room because the ceiling's white the trim's white the walls are white and I wanted to have something fun and really nice um behind me for when I do these videos so I really really love how this turned out I'm also thankful my boyfriend went through and changed all the outlets and light switch for me so that I have pretty new ones um so we were able to pop the plates back on on the brick wall and then all of the other walls because they were also dry and then I was ready to actually start like building the room the first thing that we had to do was figure out my desk situation, um, where we wanted it to be, put it back together. We did take it apart um, to move it. And by we, I mean him and his dad. I did not, I did not help with that. I did everything else, it's fine. Um, so we placed it out the way it needed to be, popped it all back together, kind of figured out where we wanted to set. That way the rest of the room could be built around it. So I did um, take my two bookshelves or shelving units that I had previously that came from Ikea and we're going to put them in the corner and this is usually just where I have um like a, I don't know just a bunch of stuff sitting so I'm, this is why I haven't organized yet because I'm really trying to talk through it and work through it so I'm just going to have those in the corner I really like the where they're sitting and then I'm going to go through and kind of reorganize everything and see some stuff might be, go back to where I had it before and some may not. The thing I'm really excited about is my new table. Okay guys this table is by Studio Designs and it is a sewing table. I am so excited about this table. You, I like okay I told Austin that I wanted a new setup for my Cricut so previously my, suit, my craft room was much smaller and I had too much stuff and I literally like only had paths at times to where I can get through. I didn't have any table space, like tabletop space. And so when it would come to using my Cricut, I either had to pull it out into the living room and set up on the coffee table or clear a spot on the floor to be able to even start setting it up. So I didn't use it as often as I should. I needed to use it um, I mean, I still use it a lot, but I need to be able to use it more. So I found this table on Amazon through um, a lady that I follow on TikTok. I was so grateful for it because I had told him about a table I wanted to design. And like two days later, I saw this lady building this table and it was absolutely perfect for what I needed. So I wanted a place to be able to store my Cricut out of the way, but also pull it out and pop it up whenever I needed it to. And this is exactly that. I will say it was very easy to assemble other than some of the screws were hard to get in. Um, they had clearly like drilled the holes in the metal before coating it. So when they put this coating on it, it just made it a little tight. So you just kind of like pre-screw them in and then you can assemble. But very easy directions to follow, very easy to assemble. I really like their little tool packet. It was like a pop it packet. That way you can just pop out what you needed at that time and not have to worry about losing any pieces because they're still in the package. Um, I did not really film myself doing this because I honestly just didn't want to be on camera, but it really did go very smoothly. I did the whole thing. I didn't you know, have to have extra hands or anything. Um, I did with the height, I did, so there's like two screws that will hold it in place. So at first I did the first two holes on the, um, on the legs where you can adjust the height but after I got it set up and stood up I do want to be able to stand but I'm a little shorter so I did pop it down one hole so it was on the second and third hole if you're curious about the height but I love this because I can literally set this thing up with one hand like on the carpet it still rolls really good I can literally pull it off the wall pop it up so literally one hand I'm filming with one hand popping up with other I literally just set the thing on my head and then you just pull the leg out and it sets in place. 
I have all of this space now for when I'm going to use my Cricut. If I need a little bit of extra space for something that I'm working on, um, I can use one leaf. I can use two leaves. It doesn't matter. I'm also going to be using this to help stage some of my pictures. Um, I have another idea that I want to do as far as staging, but that's for another video. And then I can literally just fold it back down and pull it, push it against the wall and it's out of completely out of my way. It's storing my Cricut machine. Um, it's getting that off and clearing some shelf space for me. I am so excited about this. Um, it has a shelf on the bottom, which is where I'll store my Cricut. And then it has two baskets that you can put other stuff in. I'm going to put the power cords in there. Probably my roll of transfer tape because it's like an awkward size and I never know where to put it. I'm so excited. You should definitely check this out. This table is in my affiliate links. Um, I'm in love with it. It's I think it's going to be the addition to my room that I really needed and I'm very excited. The last place in my room that we're really going to focus on is um, my table before is where I did my sublimation. I wasn't really able to get into the sublimation the way I wanted to right after I got my stuff. I definitely played around. I've um, created several things with it, but I really want to learn and be able to do that. Part of the reason why I didn't is just because I was so busy um, just with creating and my businesses and things. But the other reason is because it was so overwhelming to be in my room half the time I couldn't even get to the table. So I'd have to take all this time to clear a spot to be able to work properly and it was very overwhelming and so I did not use it as much as I should and I'm very excited to have a space specifically for that that I won't have to take over to do other crafts because I ran out of space over here. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. I do plan on getting a better tablecloth for it. I just wanted something to cover for now and to hide all my junk underneath the table because I do use the underneath for storage as well. And that's pretty much it. It for this makeover for now I do have two closets two two closets in this room you guys I'm ecstatic so I do want to work on um, the shelves are kind of beat up and kind of flimsy I'm probably gonna pull those out and replace those uh, I didn't paint the closet yet because I don't know if I'm gonna do any type of closet organizer or exactly my plan yet because I haven't focused on the organization Right now, I had to focus on the functionality and actually getting it usable. So um, stay tuned for that. I do plan on doing an organizing video to show you kind of where I ended up. And I'm very, like I said, I'm just so excited to finally have this room. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for me of what has worked well for you in your organization, or if you've seen, you see the space and you're like, hey, let's try this out. I would love to hear that from you. Um, Consider giving me a thumbs up on this video if you like this content, if you think that the feature wall and things turned out well, um, consider subscribing. I really want to hit a subscriber goal of 5,000. Um, a lot of the people that watch my videos still haven't subscribed, so I'm just going to put out this little, like, please, of, if you're here um, for multiple videos, please consider subscribing. I understand I usually would watch one or two of someone's videos before I would do it, so if you're back or if you are new, check out a few other videos and see if this is a channel you want to hang out at. So I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.